Please stand and face the back of the church, please. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. My dear brothers and sisters, since the beginning of Lent until this day, we have prepared our hearts by penance and charitable works. Today, we gather to herald with the whole church the beginning of the celebration of the Lord's Paschal mystery, that is, his passion and resurrection. For it was to accomplish this mystery that he entered his own city of Jerusalem. Therefore, with all faith and devotion, let us commemorate the Lord's entry into the city for our salvation following his footsteps, so that being made by his grace partakers of the cross, we may have a share also in his resurrection and in his life. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, sanctify and bless these branches with your blessing, that we who follow Christ the King in exaltation may reach the eternal Jerusalem through him who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with the Spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. When Jesus and his disciples drew near to Jerusalem, to Bethpage and Bethany, at the Mount of Olives, he sent two of his <laughs> disciples and said to them, Go into the village opposite you, and immediately upon entering it, you will find a colt tethered on which no one has ever sat. Untie it and bring it here. If anyone should say to you, why are you doing this? Reply, the master has need of it and will send it back here at once. So they went off and found a colt tethered at the gate outside on the street, and they untied it. And some of the bystanders said to them, what are you doing untying the colt? They answered him just as Jesus had told them to, and they permitted them to do it. So they brought the colt to Jesus and put their cloaks over it, and he sat on it. And many people spread their cloaks on the road, and others spread leafy branches that they had cut from the fields. Those preceding him as well as those following kept crying out, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the kingdom of our father David that is to come. Hosanna in the highest, the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Dear brothers and sisters, like the crowds who acclaim Jesus in Jerusalem, let us go forth in peace.
let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, who as an example of humility for the human race to follow, caused our Savior to take flesh and submit to the cross, graciously grant that we may heed his lesson of patient suffering and so merit a share in his resurrection, for he lives and reigns forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. The Lord God has given me a well-trained tongue that I might know how to speak to the weary, a word that will rouse them. Morning after morning, he opens my ear that I may hear. And I have not rebelled, have not turned back, I gave my back to those who beat me, my cheeks to those who plucked my beard, my face I did not shield from the buffets and spitting. The Lord God is my help, therefore I am not disgraced. I have set my face like flint, knowing that I shall not be put to shame. The word of the Lord. In the midst. 
midst of the assembly, I will praise you. You who fear the Lord, praise him. All you descendants of Jacob, give glory to him. Revere him. All you descendants of Israel, A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. Christ Jesus, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God, something to be grasped. Rather, he emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, coming in human likeness, and found human in appearance. He humbled himself, becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Because of this, God greatly exalted him and bestowed on him the name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bend, of those in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. The word of the Lord. If you're following along in the gospel we will read, you see many different parts. Uh, our custom here is to use just two parts, the two readers, and to ask you to follow along in your minds and hearts as you hear the words. So your part is listening, our part's reading. The Passion of Our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Mark. As soon as morning came, the chief priests with the elders and the scribes, that is, the sole Sanhedrin, held a council. They bound Jesus, led him away, and handed him over to Pilate. And Pilate questioned him, Are you the king of the Jews? And he said to him in reply, You say so. The chief priests accused him of many things. And again Pilate questioned him, Have you no answer? See how many things they accuse you of. And Jesus gave him no further answer, so that Pilate was amazed. Now, on the occasion of the feast, he used to release to them one prisoner whom they requested. 
A man called Barabbas was then in prison, along with the rebels who had committed murder in a rebellion. The crowd came forward and began to ask him to do for them as he was accustomed. Pilate answered, Do you want me to release to you the king of the Jews? For he knew that it was out of envy that the chief priests had handed him over. But the chief priests stirred up the crowd to have him release Barabbas for them instead. Pilate again said to them in reply, Then what do you want me to do with the man you call the king of the Jews? They shouted, Crucify him. Pilate said to them, Why? What evil has he done? They only shouted louder, Crucify him. So Pilate, wishing to satisfy the crowd, released Barabbas to them, and after he had Jesus scourged, handed him over to be crucified. The soldiers led him away inside the palace, that is, the praetorium, and assembled the whole cohort. They clothed him in purple and weaved a crown of thorns, placing it on him. They began to salute him with, Hail, King of the Jews, and kept striking his head with a reed and spitting upon him. They knelt before him in homage, and when they had mocked him, they stripped him of the purple cloak dressed him in his own clothes, and led him out to crucify him. They pressed into service a passerby named Simon, a Cyrenian, who was coming in from the country, the father of Alexander and Rufus, to carry his cross. They brought him to the place called Golgotha, which is translated place of the, of the skull. They gave him wine drugged with myrrh, but he did not take it. Then they crucified him and divided his garments by casting lots for them to see what each should take. It was nine o'clock in the morning when they crucified him. The inscription of the charge against him read, the King of the Jews. him they crucified two revolutionaries, one on his right and one on his left. And those passing by reviled him, shaking their heads and saying, Aha, you would destroy the temple and rebuild it in three days. Save yourself by coming down from the cross. And likewise the chief priest with the scribes mocked him among themselves and said, He saved others. He cannot save himself. And let the Christ, the King of Israel, come down now from the cross, that we may see and believe. And those who were crucified with him also kept abusing him. At noon, darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. And at three o'clock, Jesus cried out in a loud voice, Eloi, Eloi. Lama Sabachthani, which is translated, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Some of the bystanders who heard it said, Look, he is calling Elijah. One of them ran and soaked a sponge with wine and put it on a reed and gave it to him to drink, saying, Wait, let us see if Elijah comes to take him down. Jesus gave a loud cry and breathed his last.
the veil of the sanctuary was torn in two from top to bottom. When the centurion who stood facing him saw how he breathed his last, he said, truly, this man was the son of God. Also women looking on from a distance. Among them were Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of the younger James and of Joseph and Salome. These women had followed him when he was in Galilee and ministered to him. There were also many other women who had come up with him to Jerusalem. And when it was already evening, since it was the day of reparation, the day before the Sabbath, Joseph of Arimathea, a distinguished member of the council, who was himself awaiting the kingdom of God, came and courageously went to Pilate and asked him for the body of Jesus. Pilate was amazed that he was already dead. He summoned the centurion and asked him if Jesus had already died. And when he learned of it from the centurion, he gave the body to Joseph. And having bought a linen cloth, he took him down, wrapped him in the linen cloth, and laid him in a tomb that had been hewn out of the rock. And then he rolled a stone against the entrance to the tomb. Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of Joseph, watched where he was laid. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Very frequently in the scriptures, images say as much as words. For me, two images are striking in the gospels that we heard tonight. The first image is Jesus riding on a colt entering Jerusalem. And the second image is the priests watching him carefully. You can almost see the images coming together. Jesus is coming through the main gate of the city on the colt of a donkey. People are swinging palm branches and tree branches, and they're proclaiming him as the chosen one, the Messiah. And on the parapet of the temple, the very top of the temple, there are the priests, and they're standing watching. And I bet that one of them said to the others, look, look at that man riding the colt. He wants to change our lives. Imagine the conversation after that. We can't let him do that. He'll change our lives and the lives of the people. We're happy the way things are. We're important people. We live comfortably. People look up to us. If he changes things, what will happen to us? What will it be like? Who knows? They rejected the man riding the colt. They would not change. And I would imagine that there are moments in all of our lives when we know that we should change. Sometimes we know we have an attitude that's irritable, negative, and it drives people away. We should change. But no, I'm kind of comfortable with that. Or sometimes our 
habits and activities are leading us nowhere. And they're not right. And they're hurting people. We should change. But no, I'm comfortable with that. How many times we say, I should never do that again. I mean, that didn't work. That's no good. Look what happened. I should change. But we don't. And that's the challenge of today's Gospels. Look, look. That man riding a colt wants to change your life. Will you let him? Please stand. Together, we profess our faith using the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, the Father Almighty. From there, he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. With faith, we come before the Lord with our needs. God's exaltation of the name of Jesus may bring people of all nations to their knees. Let us pray to the Lord. That God may not abandon the distressed, the dying, or those sentenced to death. Let us pray to the Lord. Jesus may journey together with us through experiences of loss and sacrifice. Let us pray to the Lord. That all who have died may enter the heavenly Jerusalem, joining the angels and saints in giving glory to God. Let us pray to the Lord. Oh, God, hear us, hear our prayer. For the parish intention for this Mass, the deceased members of St. Mark the Evangelist Parish, and for the prayers we hold in the silence of our hearts. Let us pray to the Lord. God, we give you thanks for the gift that is Jesus, your Son. Help us to follow him through his passion and death to the glory of heaven as we make this prayer through Christ our Lord.
let us pray that our sacrifice may be acceptable to God, who is the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept this sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. O Lord, through the passion of your only begotten Son, may our reconciliation with you be near at hand so that though we do not merit it by our own deeds, yet by this sacrifice made once for all, we may feel already the effects of your mercy through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. With Lift up your hearts. <laughs> Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For though innocent, he suffered willingly for sinners, and accepted unjust condemnation to save the guilty. His death has washed away our sins. His resurrection has purchased our justification. And so with all the saints and angels, we proclaim your glory as in joyful celebration we acclaim Holy You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more, giving thanks, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. 
Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world. Bring her to the fullness of charity. Together with Francis, our Pope, David, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may praise you and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our day, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. O Lord, nourished by these sacred gifts, we humbly beseech you that just as through the death of your Son you have brought us to hope for what we believe, so by his resurrection you may lead us to where you call through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please take a bulletin. There's those pamphlets for the rest of Lent. For all the other events of Holy Thursday, Good Friday, Easter Vigil, the Masses for Easter. So please take all the material you need to bring you back. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.